Israelites. Ian, is that correct? I heard Ian say the children of Israel, the Israelites. Can anybody think of another name for the Israelites, the children of Israel? What's another name that we call them? Do you know? Does anybody know any other names for the children of Israel or the Israelites? Does it start with a J? Starts with a J. Also starts with an H. Anybody know? So another name which we've said is the Jews. You've heard that name, the Jews. Those are the Israelites, the children of Israel. And there's another name. Cody's thinking, so I'm not going to say it until he just... You think you know the other name? Starts with an H. What? Hebrews. The Hebrews. That's right. The Hebrew children, the Jewish, the Jews, the Israelites, the children of Israel. And those people, they were... God made them into a nation out of from Abraham, remember that, all the way back in the Bible. Now, are those people still around today? I mean, Abraham is not still around today, but are the children of Israel still around today? Yes, they are. That's right. And they actually have a land now that they can live in if they want to go there. They're spread all over the world, but many of them, millions of them, have moved back to the land of Canaan, to the land of Palestine, to the land of Israel, and that is their land. Why is the land of Israel the children of Israel's land? Why is it their land? Because Jesus gave it to them. Uh, yes, God gave it to them. God gave it to Abraham. And so that's the only land in the whole world that God gave to, to a particular people. Right? So, all right. Now, how many of you... So we're, we're, we're going, we're starting in the book of Numbers. How many of you have ever been sitting around the house, maybe it was a holiday, maybe it was a birthday, and um, your parents were there, and maybe your grandparents or uncles were there, and they were telling stories about things that happened a long time ago, maybe even before you were born. Can you remember a time, maybe you don't have to remember the story, but you remember a time when your parents were doing that? Jasmine, you remember that? They were, they're sitting there, they're telling stories about stuff that happened a long time ago. My grandma died, but one day you died. She died? By the but, fire. but you've got to hear her tell stories about the way things were in the past, right? So, Silas, you know not to do that. So, your parents tell stories about the way things were in the past, and it's good to remember things that happened in the past. In fact, God tells us that we're supposed to remember things, and especially the children of Israel, he told them that he wanted them to remember the things that he had done for them. And we talked about some of them 
And why did God want them to remember the things he had done for them? What are some reasons, maybe, that he wanted the children of Israel to remember the things that he had done for them? Any ideas? Jasmine, what do you think? It's okay. Cody? So they could tell their kids. That's a good reason. Why would he want him to tell their kids what he had done for them? So that the kids would believe in God. Very good. You have a... Oh, you're stretching. Okay. So, now I want us to act. I want us to act like we are the children of Israel. Okay? And... I want us, we've had lessons, we know lots of stuff that happened to us, right? We're going to act like we're the children of Israel. Remember all the things that happened to us? I want us to think back from now all the way back to when we lived in Egypt. Do you remember living in Egypt? Yeah. What were we in Egypt? Do you remember that, Allie? Slaves. We were slaves in Egypt. That's right. So, now, yeah. don't go past there. Don't go further back because we don't have the whole... Day. We have to stop. But I want us to think about all the things that God has done for us. We are the children of Israel, remember? We're imagining we're the children of Israel. What has happened to us? What has God done for us since we were slaves in Egypt? And let's just try to think first, maybe try to think about some of the very the ways that God showed how mighty and powerful he was. Can you think of anything like that? That God did for us. God, uh, the Egypt out of um, the land of Egypt. He took the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. Yes. Yeah, so now, what were some of the things he did in order to do that? What? He gave us food and water. That was after we were out of Egypt. But that's powerful, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so he gave us food and water. How, but how did he get us out of Egypt? Because we couldn't just walk away, right? We were slaves. What was some things? Or something? He parted the Red Sea. He parted the Red Sea. We were on our way out, and the Egyptians changed their mind, didn't they? And they came up behind us, and they were going to take us back to Egypt. And we were trying to go that way, but in front of us was the Red Sea. And what happened? God put a cloud behind us so the Egyptians couldn't see us. And then he parted the Red Sea, and we walked right across on dry land. And then he lifted the cloud, and what did the Egyptians do? They chased us, and they went into the dry land, into the Red Sea on the dry land. And then what happened? God let the waters come back, and he destroyed the army of Egypt. And when that happened... Miriam, do you remember who Miriam is? Miriam is Moses and Aaron's sister. Miriam led all the ladies in a song of praise to God, thanking him for what he had done. Okay, so that's one of the things. Something before that happened, though, that was very powerful that God did to free us from Egypt. What? Let my people go. He sent Moses to Pharaoh, said... Jehovah says, let my people go. And did Pharaoh just say, okay? No, he didn't say, okay. So then what happened? We don't have very good memories. We're almost like the Egyptians. The death of the firstborn. Now, how do we remember? Did all the firstborn die? Certain firstborn did not die. Which firstborn did not die? What saved the life of the firstborn that did not die? Cody. The lamb's blood around the door, right? And so they they killed the lamb, put his blood over the door, and the angel passed over those houses. And how, what did God tell, tell the children of Israel to do to remember how he redeemed them from Israel on that night? What were they supposed to do to remember that? How did he? Let's see here. Go ahead, Allie. Well, they didn't do that to remember it. That's what happened that night. 
they had, they called it the Passover, and so they celebrated the Passover every year. Okay, so that God told them to do that so that they would remember. Okay, so there's some things that we remember. Um, and what are some other things? Remember, we're is we're the Israelites. We're in the wilderness right now, and a bunch of stuff God has done for us since we were slaves in Egypt. What what about um, okay? Well, that was that was in Egypt. Yes, he turned it in the Nile River water into blood. <laughs> Try to tell Pharaoh, convince Pharaoh to let us go. But let's just say now we are out of Egypt. Otherwise, it's going to take us all day. Some things God told us. Well, the rock and water came out. He gave us water from the rock. Now, so let's go to God told us how to live. Okay? You remember how God told us how to live? Who did he actually tell? Who did he actually tell? Joseph. No, it wasn't Joseph. He went up in the mountain and God talked to him and gave him some things. Joseph. Anya? Moses. Moses. That's right. Moses went up in the mountain, and God gave him the Ten Commandments, right? And then he gave us all the other rules. Some people, if people worship idols, they just kind of, they don't know what, what they're supposed to do. Of course, are idols for real? In fact, the Ten Commandments told us not to worship any idols. We did that one time, though, didn't we? Yep, Moses was up in the mountain... And we said, Aaron, make us some gods. And that was a bad day, wasn't it? But God gave us his law with all the Ten Commandments and all the things. So we know God told us that's kind. God told us exactly what he wants us to do so we don't have any questions about what he wants us to do. Right? Then, can you think of another thing God did so that we can be close to God? So that he can be near us. The cloud. the cloud. Where's the cloud? Above. Above where? Oh, above us? Okay. The cloud is above us. That's, that's how we could know where to go or when to go. Stop here. Go there. Whatever the cloud says. That's Yes, so God led us with the cloud. But then after a while, God had us do something and the cloud sat in one place. Over top of what? The, which altar? Ah, good try. The Ark of the Covenant, right? And the Ark of the Covenant was where? Where's the Ark of the Covenant? In the Holy of Holies, which is next to the Holy Place, which is part of the Tabernacle. So, and the Tabernacle is where? Where is the Tabernacle for us? Is it way off, a long way away? It's in the middle. God's presence is right in the middle of us, isn't it? So, and God made it so he would be right in the middle of us. And anytime we want to, we can just go and, sac and, and fellowship with God. Can anybody fellowship with God? Anybody? Any way? Kind of. But God told us something else. He told us how we could fellowship with God, right? With him. How did he... Because God is holy, and we, every one of us, have done what? We've done wrong, which is sin. And so people with sin, they can't go to God. But God made a way for us to be able to come to Him, right? Let me find my picture hint. I think people already know, because they're waving at me. But how, how is it that God made it so we can come to God? Let's take one other hand up the longest. Jasmine? And we call that a sacrifice or an offering. Do you remember how many offerings there were? There was five offerings. There was the burnt offering, which kind of was like a, a consecration. There was a meal offering, which was Thanksgiving. There was a peace offering, which is fellowship with God. There was the sin offering which was to cover our sins, and the trespass offering, which kind of, which we would 
sacrifice if we wronged somebody and it would cover our guilt? What was the biggest, most important? There's one day that is so very important, the most important day in the year for us. God gave us a special day. Most important day in the whole year has to do with some sacrifices in the t tabernacle. Silas? We're Israelites, remember? We're imagining we're Israelites. Christmas hasn't come yet. This is 3,000 years ago. But good one for today. What is it? The seventh day? That's an important one, but out of the whole year, there's one day that's even more important. We do it, we celebrate it with a Sabbath, and but we're sad on this day. Ian? The Day of Atonement. Now, God wants his people to remember everything that he's done for them, and we haven't remembered all of it, and he gave them feast days to remember, and, and other special days, and the Sabbath days, and his laws, and the Levites, and the priests, and all those things he put in place so that they would remember and teach their children what he would do for them. And God wants, he wanted them to remember them so that they, if they came unto a hard time, and they, they might say, well, maybe this time I should worship an idol. What should they remember? If they start thinking, maybe this time I should worship an idol, what else should they think on this side? No, bad idea, right? Last time we worshiped an idol, God was angry, right? Um, maybe they, 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 if they get hungry and they think, Oh, what should I do? I'm hungry. What should they do? God wants them to remember how he took care of them, right? When they were hungry. Um, there's the enemy. Do you remember one time when they were fighting against the Malachites? Joshua was fighting with them, and Moses was up on the mountain with his hands raised to heaven. God gave them the victory over their enemies. So they have an enemy, and they think, maybe we should call... Um, call another country and have them help us. No, what should they do? Call on God to help them, right? So, he wanted them to remember so that when they came up to other times that might be hard for them, they would remember God and how he had taken care of them and they would continue to trust and believe in God. Now, now, us, we are not Israelites anymore. We're done acting like we're Israelites. Now we are the kids at Black Oak Bible Club. And we have more than Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus. Don't we? We have Numbers, Deuteronomy, all the way through the Old Testament. And we have the New Testament. And in the New Testament, we find out that Jesus died on the cross, right? And he took the place of all those sacrifices. So I want us to think now for us. We were imagining we were Israelites. Now we're us. And God wants us to remember the things he has done for us. What are... Uh-oh. Okay, so we're not going to use that. We just have to use our minds. What are some things that God has done for us? Let me give you a hint. First one is... How did we get here? Not how did we drive in the car here today. How did we get to be here on the earth? Genesis? God. God did what? It's in the book of Genesis. In the very beginning, God helped, created, right? The heaven and the earth, and he created us. He created us, and He created everything around us. He created a perfect world that's not perfect right now, and we know why. But it's not perfect right now, but God created the, 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 the plants, the animals, the fish, the birds, the stars, and He created us. God did that for us. Okay? What's something else that God did for us? About 2,000 years ago, we remember it in December. Silas. That's what we remember in the spring. But God, Jesus did die on the cross. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Jasmine? For our sins. For our sins. So Jesus is our Savior. We should remember that, shouldn't we? 
God is our creator. Jesus is our savior. Um, he came to the earth at the Christmas time, right? To be our savior. And when he died, he saved us. Did he stay dead? No, he rose from the dead. We should remember that. God tells us, and I don't understand how. It's not, it's, we can't explain it um, like, like a math problem. But because Jesus rose from the dead, all the power, all the whatever energy that it took for him to raise himself from the dead is available for us to do what's right, to resist sin, to obey God. So we should remember, because sometimes we see something and we think, oh, that would be fun, but we know it's wrong, and we say, oh, but it's, I really want to do it, but if Jesus, Jesus is our Savior, because he rose from the dead, we can have the power and the energy and the willpower to say no to sin. So, God created us. He's our Savior. He rose from the dead. What's something else that God gave us? Oh, he gave us our family. Our family, yes. What's another thing God gave us? Light. I'm sorry? Light. Light? Like day and night light? Yes. Okay? That's part of creation. But he's, he sets creation so we don't have to worry about the world falling apart. We don't have to worry about um, crazy things that the rest of the world, like the environment, is going to collapse. Will the environment ever collapse? No. Who's in control of the environment? God. Now, if you don't believe in God, then you think the environment is going to collapse, and we have to do things to save the environment. We don't need to save the environment. God made the environment. Anyway, so... God gave us the world. He created us. He's Savior. Um, what else did God give us? Shelter. Shelter. Okay. He cares for us. What else did God give us? Anya? Water. Water. Okay. In creation. What else did God give us? Food. Food. <laughs> created the world. that gives us food. What else did God give us? The Bible, <laughs> that's right. The Bible is a special book. It's not like any, well, those are games. But it's not like any other book, unless there's a Bible over there, and there is. It's not like any of those books. People wrote those books. Who gave us the Bible? God. It's God's Word. Somehow, He used people, yes, but these are His words. God, who's perfect, who made everything, gave us His Word. And there's not the answer to math problems in the Bible. But all the hard questions that we face in life, should I hang around with this person? Should I do that? Now, that person's name is not in the Bible, but God has given us the answer to all the questions that we need are in the Bible. Not like they're in a dictionary or an encyclopedia, but as we read the Bible and understand what God has said to us, He, le he tells us everything that we need to know or we can research the Bible and find out what we need to know. How to make right decisions, how to make right choices, how to think about things, how to know about Jesus, how to know about creation. God gave us his Bible, his word. And we should remember that, right? So, the first part of our lesson, we imagine that we were the Israelites and we were trying to remember all the things that God did for us since we were slaves in Egypt. And at the end of our lesson, we remember that we live today, and we try to remember some of the things that God has done for us because we know him, because we have believed on Jesus, and he's given us his word. Now, I'm just going to tell you, as we go through the lessons, we're going to find out that the children of Israel didn't always remember. And so then they started to do what? Disobey and complain, and it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and you know what else happens? Sometimes we forget what God has done and given to us, and then we don't do what's right. We complain, we disobey, and it does not please God, and He will chasten us. He will give us discipline. That's why our lessons are called God's Discipline, and we'll learn more about that in the next Three weeks. But today, I want us to remember, and even as we leave here, I want us to try to think about other things 
that God has already done for us. If we're thinking about what God has done for us, it's going to be hard to complain about what's happening to us right now. 